Okay, so here we are right where we left off, and the focus of this video um, is going to be the role of the kidney in maintaining the pH. And remember, the two main jobs the kidney performs is, uh, one, excreting hydrogen ions, and two, reclaiming the filtered bicarbonate. So the main thing we're going to answer, how do we deal with this acid that's produced every day? And first, we're going to talk about reclaiming the bicarbonate that's filtered. Okay, so here we are in the proximal tubule of the nephron. So bicarbonate, since it is a small molecule, it's freely filtered at the glomerulus. And based on the prior videos, you saw that uh, we need bicarbonate around as a buffer to buffer any acid loads. So since it's filtered, it's something that we'd want to actively reabsorb and reclaim in the kidney. We don't want to waste it out. Otherwise, that would cause an acidosis. So Here's the process uh, by which the kidney reclaims uh, bicarbonate. So filtered bicarbonate comes down and actually meets free hydrogen ions. So this right here is a sodium hydrogen ion exchanger. It spits a, uh, a hydrogen ion into the lumen in exchange for absorbing sodium. This uh, hydrogen ion will combine with bicarb and form carbonic uh, acid, which Thanks to carbonic anhydrase, which is sitting right here in the lumen um, on the brush border of the proximal tubular cell, will create CO2 and water. As a result, CO2, since it's uh, soluble and it can permeate cell membranes, it just diffuses into the cell. And the cell has carbonic anhydrase inside, and it can combine with water and recreate carbonic, uh, carbonic acid to basically regenerate that hydrogen ion, but also uh, generate the bicarbonate. On the basal lateral side of the cell, there is a sodium bicarbonate co-transporter that uh, will move it into the basal lateral side so it can be resorbed into the blood. So the net effect is that sodium and bicarbonate is reabsorbed. Uh, one important feature is that this co-transporter, the sodium hydrogen ion co-transporter, does not require uh, ATP. It's actually uh, driven by a uh, concentration gradient, which is high in the lumen, since it contains lots of freshly filtered uh, urine that contains sodium, that uh, is low inside the cell. And this gradient uh, drives the co-transporter. And it's also um, supported by sodium potassium ATPase, which will try and keep sodium concentrations low inside the cell. So one thing worth noting about uh, proximal tubular bicarbonate reabsorption is that it exhibits a threshold effect. And this graph represents an experiment where normal subjects uh, were given acid, so they were made uh, acidotic, and their plasma bicarbonate was reduced to about 12 or 14. Okay. Then they were slowly given back uh, sodium bicarbonate, and uh, they calculated the amount of filtered bicarbonate over time as this number increased. So as their plasma bicarb increased, the amount filtered at the glomerulus increased. So what was interesting is that as long as uh, the bicarb was low, the kidney would reabsorb all of the filtered bicarbonate. That's what I'm drawing here, the reabsorbed line. Uh, on the same token, the amount excreted into the urine was nil. It was very low, right? The kidney wants to hold on to all the filtered bicarbonate because it recognizes that um, it's dealing with acidosis right now. Bicarb is low, so it wants to hold on to it. What was interesting, the amount excreted as they measured it, once they hit this threshold of about 26 or so, they noticed that the kidney is starting to excrete bicarb. And what they're able to do with the calculation is that the amount being reabsorbed starts to plateau out above this threshold. So what this tells us is that somewhere around you know, 25 or 26 is the threshold for bicarbonate reabsorption in the kidney. Below this point, the kidney can uh, reabsorb 100% of what it sees. But above this point, um, you exceed that threshold and the kidney will waste the rest of it into the urine. This is important, right, because as we saw in the first video, keeping a bicarbonate uh, 
somewhere around this range, 24 to 26, uh, helps maintain the pH within normal range. Above this point, um, in most cases, the kidney doesn't uh, need the excess bicarbonate and it will waste it into the urine appropriately. Okay, now we're going to talk about um, the things that stimulate and inhibit proximal bicarbonate reabsorption. So remember that here's kind of a, a miniature uh, version of that picture we saw earlier. Uh, remember that this hydrogen ion is secreted with a cotransporter um, that's absorbing sodium. So things that would stimulate this include a volume depletion. So if there's a, a total body sodium depletion, um, in addition to other areas, this area is going to be overactive trying to reabsorb that sodium. Usually chloride depletion goes along with volume depletion. Um, and so if chloride is not absorbed uh, with sodium in other areas, this will be overactive trying to reabsorb sodium, but the only consequence is that it brings along bicarbonate with it. Um, so this is part of the uh, contributing effect to what we call the contraction alkalosis. Also, uh, hypokalemia uh, stimulates this uh, process, mainly because um, hypokalemia causes uh, an exchange in which potassium will leave the cell and hydrogen ions tend to enter the cell. And so higher levels of hydrogen ions inside the cell will promote uh, this process where you have more hydrogen ions available to participate in the exchange. Also, um, elevated PCO2 and a metabolic acidosis will promote proximal bicarbonate reabsorption. And uh, this should make total sense, right? Because we want uh, to reabsorb bicarbonate in the setting of an acidosis. And you can imagine if you had more CO2 available, this dissolving um, through membranes and uh, inside cells, now it can participate uh, as an ingredient in the cycle that will lead to the reabsorption of bicarbonate. Um, on the other side, things that will inhibit this process are really just the, the, the flip side of the things that stimulate it. So volume expansion. So if we don't need excess sodium, um, then sodium reabsorption will not be taking place. Um, hyperkalemia, by the same token, there'll be potassium and hydrogen ion exchange. So if your hydrogen ions inside the cells, um, low PCO2, so uh, hyperventilation, or if we already have a metabolic alkalosis, uh, bicarbonate reabsorption will uh, not be stimulated. Uh, the only thing that's a little special is a, an inhibitor to carbonic anhydrase. So this is a drug called acetazolamide. And this drug would directly inhibit uh, this enzyme, carbonic anhydrase, and uh, it promotes the loss of sodium and mainly bicarbonate in the urine. Um, it's a type of diuretic uh, that can be used to treat uh, volume overload. It's also used to treat um, altitude sickness. So in our next video, we're gonna go on to distal acidification, how the kidney is able to excrete hydrogen ions.